But it's challenging because normally with other games it's just for fun, but this is actually like a like a mind puzzle to try and get your head around it. I think it's really good and fun. It's quite addictive. <laughs> so the children are playing our game, a Facebook game called Fraxness, that allows them to analyse our uh, Ash dieback data. Ash dieback data is uh, DNA sequence data from. Um, lots of individual uh, samples of ash dieback taken from around Norfolk. One of the problems that we have, uh, particularly with uh, a new problem, a new disease of, of trees like ash dieback, is that it takes a long time to try and uh, pull together all the scientists uh, to uh, do the analysis that we need. We don't have uh, a quick enough response. What uh, people can do for us, the general public, is lots and lots of small analyses. In this case, we're using crowdsourcing with uh, the general public through Facebook games to try and do genetic analyses for us. So in playing the game, you do a, a small uh, but very, very useful genetic analysis. So they're playing with exactly the same sort of data that I would use as a scientist uh, that I would do my analyses with. I think it's really kind of challenging because you have to like line up all the patterns and it's just like re really hard to try and get a head around it because I mean there's so many different versions you can do and it's just really good. Yeah it's good it's based on a real problem whereas most games it's sort of pointless and based on nothing at least doing this it's towards something. Yeah. So the game presents to us uh, genomic DNA uh, from different samples. Okay, so this section here, this is a reference pattern. This is uh, a, represents a little bit of DNA from a, one of our samples. Each of the little leaf shapes represents a different nucleotide. And the objective is to try and find the best match possible between the reads and the reference. And the game allows us to move the reads about left and right to try and accomplish the alignment. And we can get the best uh, alignment by introducing gaps by dragging the reeds about or by introducing uh, deletions from the reed so we can remove uh, individual leaves. Yeah because I mean like just doing the simple thing just have a bit of enjoyment can actually like save the entire population of like the ash and everything so yeah I think it's a good idea to do more of these. Yeah there definitely should be more games like this because there's not really many out there that I can think of. This is the only one that I can think of and I think people should take more interest in it. And when we've done this over the whole set of reads and maximised the score here, it's the positions that differ from the reference pattern that we're interested in. Uh, this uh, set of differences represents a possible genetic uh, variation between the sample and the reference organisms. Uh, I like the fact that it's quite easy to play, it can, it's quite competitive if you're playing against your friends, you want to get a better score than them, and if they beat you, you just want to beat them back. Yeah, and you can also like challenge them, you can steal their uh, different codes and patterns, uh, and it's just like, Ed's, Ed beat me at one of the patterns now, I'm just trying to beat him. How are you getting on? Badly. <laughs> the game never gives you an exact answer. It instead allows you to try and get your best score. Once you have a best score, the other players can see uh, your score. And if they believe they can do better, then they're able to attempt to steal. And it's this element of competition that allows for a, um, a improvement uh, and betterment of the uh, alignments and the data in our databases. Um, once we get it back to our databases it um, is used by scientists uh, to try and infer such things as um, uh, genetic distance or uh, possible uh, uh, variations that might cause uh, extra lethality of the disease or uh, extra susceptibility or resistance of a, of a tree.